Hey, it's Kevin Raber, and I am at the Indianapolis Art Center in the digital studio where I am an artist in residence. And we are going to have a little fun today putting together the new Epson P5370 printer. It's a replacement for the Epson P5000. It's a roll-fed printer, although it does sheets also. And it has bigger ink cartridges. A lot of it's based off of the Epson P900, which has a reliable track record. And so today you're going to watch the unboxing and the setup of the P5370 from Epson. Kevin Raver here. And I'm at the Indianapolis Art Center, where I'm artist in residence. And we want to talk a little bit about printers today, and specifically a brand new printer called the Epson P5370. And I happen to have one of the very first printers, and I'm going to show you how this printer is put together. We're going to do an unboxing, and then we'll get into separate videos that show us how we use this in a work environment. So this is the box and we're going to open it up. One of the things before you go anywhere with uh, the assembly of this printer, make sure you get yourself a USB printer cable. Uh, I have a 20 foot version here. We're going to need that as we do the setup. And as you can see here, I have got uh, the cart that I'm going to put this on. I bought this from Amazon for a little over $120. It's a nice sturdy cart with locking wheels. It'll allow me to move the uh, printer wherever I want into the studio here. And uh, we'll look at that as we put it together. First thing we want to do is obviously cut the tape. And what it says here is that the instruction manual and everything we need to get into this printer is on the top here. So we will open up this printer and see what we got. So, looks like we have a power cable. And paperwork, a quick start guide, and a declaration of conformity. Ha <laughs> ha, isn't that pretty cool? Uh, we have some cleaning sheets and the typical Epson quick start manual. I've managed to take the uh, box top off, and as you can see, what we got here is a lot of uh, ink, and these cartridges are pretty big. These are the initializing ink. They're not full cartridges, which is uh, typical of, of what Epson does. So we'll remove those, get them prepped up for what we're going to be doing next. Also, as usually the case, we got a lot of pieces and parts. We're gonna just put those on the printer cart and a lot of blue tape. So we can probably remove the styrofoam packaging. We've got the uh, roll assembly. The other side of the roll assembly. That's for using and sizing up different sizes of paper. And voila. This is the printer as it basically sits in the box right now. You're looking at the top of the 5370 printer uh, it's going to take two people to get out of this box, one person on each side, and you grip it and you just raise it up, put it on the cart, at which time you begin to take all the blue tape off, which is a lot of fun. So we'll be doing that shortly. Could be, if we reach down in here, hand grips, yep. and we're just gonna lift it and move it over. Ready? One, two, three. Oh boy. 
Okay. Perfect. All right. Yeah, let's just center it if you don't mind. Sure. Oh, kind of turn. How's that look? I want you to slide back towards you and I'll hold the table. What do you mean, like this? Well, it's, it's kind of cockeyed on the table. Oh, okay. Hold the table. Oh, it like that. You know, it has to be lifted to do it, I think. I just, okay. How's it look for you centered wise? Oh, we got about an inch on this side. We got about an inch here. I think we're good. Okay. Thank you. Good. We have the printer on the cart, and now it's time to do the infamous time lapse of blue tape. So I hope you enjoy this part. One of the things you'll discover about doing any Epson printer is it has a lot of blue tape on it, and we're gonna go and see if we can find every one of those pieces of blue tape, because sure as betting, if you don't and you turn the printer on, you'll find out there's a piece of blue tape hidden somewhere where you didn't know you could find blue tape. So enjoy. Like we did it. <laughs> every time I say that though, and every time I've done an Epson printer, I always find an extra few hidden gems in there somewhere. So we are now ready to proceed with the next steps of putting the ink in and getting the system charged up. Now would be a good time to talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing next. We are going to start a power up mode and do the initial settings, which I'll show you on the LCD screen. And at the same time, before we do that, because what follows is installing ink cartridges. This is one of the main benefits of working with this 5370 is the fact that it has much bigger ink cartridges. This is an 80 milliliter ink cartridge from the P900. This is a 150 milliliter cartridge from the P5370. Now this cartridge is an initial cartridge, so it only has 80 milliliters of ink in it. It's a startup cartridge, but the other cartridges you get as refills will be 150 milliliters. So you can see there is quite a bit of size difference in these, which will allow for a lot longer printing between uh, changing of ink cartridges, which sometimes with the P900 gets to be a little outrageous in how often it's done. Anyway, we're getting close to the point where uh, the printer is ready to get going, so what I'm going to do now is show you how we get the printer started up, uh, go through the initial screens, install the ink. That's going to take about 15 or 20 minutes for the ink to uh, completely charge in the printer, and then we'll load up some paper and begin to do our printing. Pretty simple setup, just takes a little bit of time and care and following the instructions. And the instructions are really simple, they come on a big form, plus you can download the manual to your iPad or as a PDF and follow the real big manual. And then of course there's the uh, quick start manual, which I'm working with right here. So the, the steps are really well identified and really easy to follow. So you shouldn't have any problem at all. We are now powering on the unit. Took a little bit of time and we're gonna follow the prompts as we go here. We want English, and it's thanking me for my purchase. That's really nice of them. We want to go month, day, and year. So the day is 227, 24, okay. We're going to go 12 hours, and it is 1256. PM. Hit OK. And now it's time to install the ink cartridges. So shall we begin doing that? Here we go. OK. There are two drawers or cabinets to fill the ink cartridge, and we just open them up like this, and you'll notice that there'll be a definition of what ink cartridges go in what spaces. 
So let's start off with a GUI cartridge. It's really important that you shake each cartridge like this for approximately 15 seconds or so, follow the instructions before putting them into the system. And they slide right in and lock right in. Pretty simple to do so far. And let's put the violet in. There we go. Close up the door. And we will go to the other side. Okay, we're about to install ink into the left side cartridge now. Here we go. Just signed up right here. P M Yellow. <clears throat> All right, here we go. We are going to take our PK, shake it up again, install it where it needs to go. Same thing with our mat. Install it where we go. We're now going to do a yellow cartridge. Install yellow. VM, Vivid Magenta. And Cyan. And we're ready to go. It close up the cartridge door. We are now, yeah. we are now into the process of charging all the lines with ink in the printer, charging the print head and getting everything ready that we can start making our prints. It's a relatively simple phase, except it takes about, uh, the manual says 16 minutes and you can see that you'll get a pop-up bar here and it's saying 15 minutes and 30 seconds. So there's no reason you're going to sit here and watch the clock spin backwards. So uh, we'll come back here once this printer is all charged up and ready to go. Okay, I'm going to be loading some uh, sheet paper into the sheet feeder at this point so that I can be doing some nozzle checks and whatnot. And essentially it's pretty simple to do. You take your sheets, slide them in here till it's up there, slide over your one guide, bring up your other guide, lift up the tray, slide it in there, bring it back down and pull it out. And that's all you need to do and you're ready to go. You'll get guided along the way. You can always say how to and follow the steps. And it gives you everything you need to know about putting different papers into the, pic into the printer. Pretty easy to do. Okay, so anyway, we now have uh, paper into the printer and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to my setting here. I'm going to go to maintenance and I'm going to go print nozzle check, start, and let's see what happens. Okay, this is take two. What we're going to do now is just print a nozzle check to make sure that all the nozzles and all the ink is working properly and we just do that by hitting the print nozzle check on the control panel and then we say start and it automatically goes through its setup, pulls in a piece of paper and it outputs to the printer. Here we go. And here comes our sheet. Let's take a look at it. It looks like we're printing, looks like we're printing good on all channels. 
So there's a circle button we push, and we push that circle button, and that basically tells the printer that we're good to go. I'm going to show you how to load the roll paper onto the roll paper feed at this point. It's really, really simple. There's instructions right on the uh, axle uh, for both two inch and three inch, and we're working with what looks to be a three inch core, so I'm just gonna basically drive that into there like that and press it together. I'm gonna make sure it comes down and everything looks good. And take this and push it down on top there, and we're all set to go. And now we'll take it over to the printer and lay it into the feed and feed the paper into the machine. To load the paper in, we're gonna open up the back of it and we just drop carefully that into there, the mechanism. We pull off the uh, tape, unwind the paper, and then we feed the paper between the silver bar and the white rollers. And you follow the instructions on the front panel and you push it in until you hear a beep, which we've heard. And then we can close that and say complete. At which time it should be all set to go. Paper remaining on, so we're gonna set that to on. On the front here and we have a hundred foot roll, so we are going to say the amount remaining is a hundred feet, say okay, and remaining alert at five feet. So we're, we're set to go for our roll paper, advanced paper settings, cut edge, cut leading edge, no, and we should be set to go. So at this point it's going to load the paper through the system and I did all that control at the control panel itself. And if everything works right, it does a little bit of finagling, aligns up the paper properly, brings it back in, and we're set to go. Simple as that. Before we go ahead and finish all our roll uh, paper settings, we do want to come to the little spot here where it has the scissors. And we're going to go, well, we do want to come to the spot where we have the scissors. And we're going to go back there and we have backwards and forwards, which you can move it. And then you can hit the cut button. But our cut settings are going to be set for auto cut, print cutting guidelines, cut for borderless prints, two cuts, and quick cut on. And we have one more thing hiding down here and do a margin refresh. So we're gonna leave it at the default settings to begin with and we'll see how it works. Paper settings, and we should make sure right now our roll setting is set at premium luster, okay? Um, <clears throat> with this 25.44 milliliters, or it's essentially eight and a half. Uh, our width is set for 25.4 millimeters in length, which is actually 10 inches by 100 meters. We need to switch that around. So I'm gonna go in and do that and get it back to the American standard size of things instead of 100 meters. But uh, simple as that to get set up. One of the first things we wanna do before we use our new printer is to make sure that the firmware is up to date. And the package that you downloaded from the internet has a package called FW5370, it's actually P5370 underscore FW, and then with the latest uh, firmware number. You wanna double click that and open it up, and you'll get a screen that looks like this. You wanna double click the firmware 
Epson firmware updater, and you'll now have a screen that kind of looks like this. And you just work your way through all the next options, agreeing to things along the way. Okay, highlight the uh, new version that you want to use. And you say start. And it says proceed, it kind of gives you uh, a second chance to do what's needed. And of course you say okay, and uh, you let it rip. And uh, it's now transmitting the firmware file to the printer. You'll get a status bar along the way telling you uh, what's going on. And then when it's complete, the firmware will now be up to date in the computer. You can also see up here, if you can see it on the screen, there'll be a, a progress bar that will show you how far things will go. And you'll also hear the uh, printer go through a couple crickety cracks and everything as it's beginning to update its drive mechanisms and so forth. And um, it, this is kind of a necessity to make sure you have the right firmware. And occasionally, especially with new printers, you're going to be given that chance to update the firmware on a regular basis. Double check and make sure if it says update the firmware that you go through this basic process again. And uh, the other thing we need to do is actually install the drivers um, into uh, the Mac. And essentially, you go to System Preferences, your screen will look like the one I'm showing or uh, more one of the more updated ones. But either way, you print and select printers and hit the plus button. And you'll be presented a dialog box. And you'll see there's an Epson SC P5300 series printer uh, in that box, and you're going to select it. And it says, should say USB. You do not want to use Bonjour. Do not select Bonjour or AirPrint or any of those things, OK? Do not do that. And then we know that this is the Epson 5300. It's going to go to Kevin's iMac, and it's going to use that. And we're just going to say Add and Continue. And you now can see that it's installed the printer. And the printer now is in this list up top here. So that's what we have to do to make sure that we have the printer driver installed on the Macintosh. Uh, one of the applications you're going to download uh, in that package is the Epson print layout uh, package. And we'll find that Epson print layout. It should be 1.5.9 as of uh, February uh, in 2024. And essentially, you just kind of get your screen up here. And you want to go down here and over on the right-hand side and select the P5300 series. I'm going to go to number two. Doesn't matter which one you want. And it's going to go out there and look for the printer. And uh, when it finds the printer, you can go to the next step of selecting the paper that's in there. I'm going to select some of the sheet-fed paper and let's make one or two prints before we go into the rolls. So I'm going to select premium photo luster paper, which is what we have in there. And I'm going to select US letter size, paper source, paper cassette sheet, quality, high quality. Standard, landscape, blah, blah, blah. OK, and then we'll just we'll select the picture and drag it down into here. And it pops up into the layout side of things. And uh, let's go select uh, another picture. And uh, we'll do a couple in there. And then we can go ahead and see what uh, it all comes out to look like here. So let me just go through the process of doing that. I selected a pano picture, and we'll select one more picture.
we have moments of silence here, sorry. We'll pull this one, we'll pull that one down. And essentially what we have here is a layout that looks like that. We have three thumbnails down at the bottom. Now there's a whole uh, number of videos that you can get on how to use the uh, Epson print layout. Uh, but I'm just doing this now so that we can actually test and make sure that everything's going to print right. And I can go in here and resize uh, these images. So I'm going to put it at a little bit more of a width there for the polar bear shot. I have a pretty good size here, but I'm going to go full width on the pano shot. And this shot looks just fine. So I'm going to select the first one. I'm going to go print. And you can see now that it's sending data to the printer. And we can call up the print status bar over here. And you can see that you get a status of where it's going. Right now, it's transmitting the data. Once it does that, you can go ahead and you can print the next one. And you'll find it, once again, transmits like that. And the printer will start making all sorts of noise, which is what it's supposed to do. And hopefully it's going to all work out just fine. And we'll put the next print and we'll say print also. And now we have a status bar right here showing what's going on. And uh, we'll let the prints come out and we'll see how they look. Let's go over and take a look. You can see right now we have our first image. Uh, that's the image of the polar bear uh, coming out and it's uh, looking pretty good so far. There it is. And just like that we have our first image. Didn't take more than a couple minutes. And we're going to go through the next iteration for the next print. So far, so good. And we're getting good uh, print results from the very first run. At this particular point, we now have the uh, second print in our queue coming out. Uh, you can see it's just about ready to eject. And this is the uh, pano picture I did of the Chicago bean in Chicago. So far, everything is working perfectly. We'll take a look at this as it comes out also. There it is. And we've got this nice image here. So looks pretty good. Nice. And we have one third more print or one. We have another print coming out, the third print coming out now. All right, and now we have the uh, third and uh, final print coming out. And this is one I did in Iceland. Let's take a look at that. Uh, boy, is that a nice looking print. Love that, love that. Look at the nice shine to it. It's got, this is the Epson uh, Pro Luster finished. And uh, it looks like we've got a good print. Looks like it matches the uh, screen pretty well. And so, so far, we're a success. Let's put some roll paper in and see what we can do with that. Okay, we are now at the point where we've actually printed our uh, test sheets and they came out just fine. I've gone back into Epson print layout and of course you can print from a number of different sources, but I'm working with Epson print layout and I have it set for the uh, P5300 using premium photo luster paper. We're gonna do letter size. The source is a roll paper. We're gonna just do quality, which is a little faster. Uh, all the things are set. I've scaled the picture to where I want it, and I'm using ICC Auto Select, which automatically selects the premium luster photo and sends it to the printer so we get uh, the good quality prints. You can see I've got an image up here with some really nice color to it. And if we're ready, all we have to do is hit the print button, and if everything works according to plan, it will send the information off to the printer, and the quantity is six. We can call up our 
print status bar up here right now and it says printing copy one, copy two of six, sheet two, and you can hear the printer starts up behind us and uh, let's take a look at these prints as they come out. I'll throw some time lapse on and uh, see what it looks like. Well, the 5370 printer, the new Epson P5370 printer is working as advertised. It was actually one of the easiest Epson printer setups I've ever done. Everything worked exactly as it was supposed to. No hiccups along the way. We did the firmware update. We hooked up all the software properly. We used Epson print layout to set up and make multiple images or multiple prints on the uh, uh, the roll side of things, we did it also on the sheet side of things, it just worked and it was a lot of fun. There's a lot more to this printer which we're going to cover in the future uh, in regards to uh, printing with different medias and other things along that way, plus there's a lot of information that we want to go over in the control panel with you, but uh, we'll do those in a future video. Today we just wanted to show you out of the box the initial setup and to show you the initial operation of the printer. Mission accomplished. Good job, Epson. Thanks everybody for being with me. I'll look for you again real soon. I want to thank you for being part of the Photo PXL family and I'm real excited to get to working with this new printer. Take care everyone.